Welcome back to Hot Mess Science. Today we're going to take a closer look at one particular state of matter, uh, one that doesn't always behave quite well, uh, and that is gas. So gas is a state of matter, uh, whether we can see it or not. Uh, it's very unique in that it is undefined in terms of its volume and in terms of its shape. And that's different from the other two states of matter because when you have a solid, you have a solid that is a particular shape and a particular volume. When you have a liquid, when you measure a liquid, it has a particular volume and it can change its shape according to what kind of container you have it in. But when you have a gas, its volume is totally undefined and its shape is totally undefined, totally dependent on uh, where, what, what shape container you have it in and whether it's enclosed or not enclosed. So to demonstrate that gas, even though we can't see it, is actually made up of atoms and has mass, has matter, um, we're going to use a little balance here. So I have, I have a little balance, it's a very sensitive balance, and uh, I have two plastic cups. And so we're gonna first create some gas. So we're gonna do that with a chemical reaction. I'm sure you're very familiar with this kind of chemical reaction. This is um, baking soda. So I'm taking about a half a cup of baking soda. Um, and then I'm gonna pour in some vinegar and that's gonna make a gas. That gas is carbon dioxide. It's a heavier gas. Uh, and we're going to see if we can get this scale to show us carbon dioxide kind of a heavier gas compared to the mixture of air that's in the other one. Uh, because in here, we might just think about it as being oxygen, but it's actually a mixture of invisible gases. We have nitrogen and carbon dioxide and water vapor and oxygen, argon. We have a, we have a mixture of things happening. So let's make some carbon dioxide bubbles. Whoa! And you can see the scale just tips down a tiny little bit there because we poured in some carbon dioxide. Let's see if we can make it go even more. I'm gonna add some more carbon dioxide, um, some more baking soda to our vinegar. Ooh. Let's see if I end up with a mess or if I end up with carbon dioxide. Oh no, I got a few drops of liquid there. That really made it drop. Okay, let's give it one more shot. Carbon dioxide, ahoy. Woo, can I get it there in time before it all spoils out? Look at that. So you can see that this particular gas we made has matter. It has a higher mass than the mixture of air that we experience naturally in, the, in, in our environment. So even though gases are undefined by volume and shape, um, under usual circumstances, we can make a lot of great predictions on how gases are gonna behave. Uh, and one of those variables that we can look at is pressure. Boyle's law is basically just saying the pressure times the volume of one equals the pressure and times the volume of the situation that happens next too. So if you wanna come see this syringe right here, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is just a regular syringe, there's no needle or anything on it. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna pull in seven, is that seven? Yeah, seven um, milliliters of air, right? And we can we can measure air just like we would um, a liquid. Um, and so if I don't stop this up, if I put pressure on this and just squeeze it out, it just squeezes that air out. But I want to see what happens to this volume under pressure, which means I need to stop this up. So I'm just going to stick a marshmallow on the end. Marshmallow works very well. And so now I'm going to push and I'm gonna see what would happen as I apply pressure on this. And as you can see, I can still compress this gas. I'm pushing really hard right now. And what do I have for millimeters? Milliliters, excuse me. Somewhere around two, two, two and a half, something like that. And so this is as much as I can compress this gas in this syringe with my fingers right now. I can let go of this. And that volume, I've taken the pressure off, and now the volume is continuing to go back and expand. And if I didn't lose any, I should end up with about seven again. Looks like I'm a little shy there. I may have squirted a little bit of my, my air into that, um, 
that uh, marshmallow. But you can see that without the pressure, um, that volume increases. I'm going to show you the difference between water. Water, I cannot um, compress the volume of water by just by adding pressure because liquid has a definite um, a definite volume and it takes the shape of uh, the syringe. Now, if I take this seven milliliters of water and I try and compress that, I cannot compress that. That water, that volume of that water cannot get any smaller even though I am increasing the pressure on it. So not the same as a gas. So uh, the second variable I wanna look at today is temperature. Now this is another law that you may or may not be going over in school this year, but this is Charles' law where the volume equals the gas constant times the temperature. But what that really means is that if we increase the temperature of a gas, we're also going to increase its volume. And so to show you a little bit of that, I have a, a little experiment. I have a bottle and I'm gonna just put some tap water in here. I have, I think about a half cup of water. There we go. And I'll put some water in there. The rest of this is just filled with our regular mixture of, of, of gas that's in the environment, in the air. And I'm gonna put this balloon over the top. So here we go, just the balloon. And then this hot plate is uh, on medium, and we're gonna start to increase the uh, temperature of the air inside this bottle. So by increasing the temperature of the water, we're starting to turn some of it into hot water vapor and increasing the temperature of the gas inside the bottle. experiment that you can do is just taking a can and putting 10 to 20 milliliters of water into it and heating the can. You can do that in a double boiler on your stove or you can use a hot plate like I am right now. And then as the water vapor starts to heat and expand, you're going to see some of that water vapor coming up the top. Our goal in this experiment is we're going to watch as the temperature increases the volume of gas as we're heating it and then we're going to plunge it and cool it so that we can watch that volume shrink and it's going to be pretty dramatic going from very heated gas to a very cooled gas okay so let's quickly cool some of this super heated gas Okay. 
All right, let's cool some of this superheated gas. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> Why is nothing working today? The universe hates me. Can I stop? Yes. I just assumed it was because of. Mom, my, my well, we're that. missing a measuring cup now. <laughs> mm. What are you doing? Why don't you unplug it? Hot mess science. <laughs> was this recording the entire time? No. I didn't get it exploding. Oops. <laughs> it's a hot mess. <laughs> Are we gonna like upload it?